Welcome to the Chase Benefits Online. In our reading this week, we hear the parable of the sower. So as our service begins, let's prepare ourselves to receive God's word and allow it to bear fruit in our lives as we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of this week's Collect. God of the heavens, God of the earth, all creation waits for your gift of new life. Prepare our hearts to receive the word of your Son, that his gospel may grow within us and yield a harvest that is a hundredfold. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Elizabeth is now going to read this week's Gospel. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a little while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. A sower went out to sow, said Jesus. Right, said the crowd, we know all about sowing. Here's a story for us. I'm willing to bet that every single person in that crowd grew their own food because they were dependent on the food they grew for their survival. Jesus went on. Some of the seed fell on a path. Some of it fell on rocky ground. Some of it fell among thorns and some of it fell on good soil. I can just imagine the crowd muttering, well, he wasn't a very good sower then, was he? He gets a good crop in the end, but frankly, it seems to be more by luck than judgment. The crowd went home with this puzzling story running around in their heads that day. And let's remember, that's all they had was the story. The explanation was only given to the disciples later and in private. But Jesus said that if the crowds had ears to hear, they would hear the voice of God in the story anyway. So I wonder, what did they hear? What might they have made of it? I'd like to suggest two things that they might have taken home with them that day. 
The first is that, to put it baldly, you win some and you lose some. This sower might have seemed particularly blasé about his sowing, but even the most careful farmer wouldn't have managed to get every seed through to maturity and a fruitful harvest. There are many obstacles to a seed's growth, however much trouble you take. The same is true of the rest of life. Some things go right and some things go wrong. Some people are go right and some go wrong. And it's often difficult to fathom out why, even in hindsight, let alone beforehand. You win some and you lose some. The early church for whom Matthew was writing his gospel knew that very well. They came face to face with their frailties on a regular basis. They lived with the ever-present threat of persecution. They wanted to stay loyal to the message of Jesus, to have courage in the face of trouble. But the reality was that some of them caved in under pressure and turned away from their faith. That was a real challenge for the rest of the church. Why did one stand firm while another seemed not to be able to? And people wondered about themselves too. When the chips were down, when the time of trial came, how would they respond? You win some and you lose some. Whatever else this story was, it was an accurate observation of the way life was and still is. Uncertain, unpredictable and uncontrollable. But if that's all we take away from the story, then it's a pretty gloomy tale. Fortunately, there is more to be found in it. A message of grace which helps us to see our frail and fallible lives in a different light. To understand it, we need to go back to that rather blasé sower and have another look at him. As I said earlier, my suspicion is that the crowd were probably pretty unimpressed by this man. He sows blindly, indiscriminately, not seeming to care whether his seed fail, falls on the good ground or bad. Why on earth would he act like this? There are two possible answers. The first is that he was a complete fool who knew no better. The second is that he knows that he has an unlimited supply of seed. If that is the case, he can afford to throw it around without any need to ration it or worry about wasting it. If you have unlimited seed, it is actually worth sowing as indiscriminately as, you, as this. In fact, you'd be a fool to do not, not to do so, because there is always a chance that between the stones, in a space between a clump of weeds, at the very edge of the path, one stray seed might grow in a place where you could never have imagined it. The parable of the sower tells us that God's love is infinite, inexhaustible. He doesn't need to ration it, and those who try to spread that love in word and deed don't need to ration it either, second-guessing where it might grow and where it might be wasted. At the time of Jesus, there were many who felt that God couldn't possibly want to spend his energy on people who, in their eyes, didn't deserve it. What did God have to do with tax collectors, prostitutes and all the other ragamuffin sinners who hung around on the edges of society? But that was where Jesus seemed to put most of his energy. His critics were scandalised, and yet the seeds that Jesus through around him with such abandon took roots in the cracks and the crevices finding good soil among the thorns and the stones in the lives of people who no one would have thought as a place where a crop of righteousness might grow and those unlikely people became a community which spread across the world taking that message with them as they went that growth could only happen because Jesus and those who followed him were so indiscriminate in their seed sowing, refusing to prejudice the soil on which their words and deeds might fall. We have no idea what's going on in other people's lives, 
we often have little idea what's going on in our own. Soil that looks rocky or thorny or too trodden down for the kingdom of God to ever take root might produce a crop that will surprise us. The story of the sower tells us that though we win some and we lose some, God never gives up on us, never sets limits on his love for us, and he calls us to be just as generous as he is, both to ourselves and those around us who need love. is now going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. The response to the petition, may your love be like a seed, is taking root and growing strong. For all the blessings of this life, we give you thanks, Creator God. For those who nurture us, families, friends, colleagues, neighbours and strangers, that the love of God may grow within that your love, your word, like a seed, may grow to produce good fruit in us. May your love be like a seed, 
taking root and growing strong. For the leaders of nations and all those in authority, that they may lead with strong hearts and gentle hands and generous spirits, with compassion and mercy, with wisdom and grace. May they reflect your will, guiding all their actions and decisions. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. For those who serve in harm's way, those who live in areas of war and strife, those who live in fear, those who worry about employment, bills, food, and struggle just to find dignity in life, may your grace bring peace and safety to all people, one to another. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. For those who suffer from any illness or disease of mind, body or spirit, restore them and all those we carry in our hearts to fullness of health. Health as only you, O God, can bring. May your mercy shower each of us with healing mercy and love. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. For those who are dying, and for those who have died, send forth your comforting love. Give solace to those who mourn, console those who grieve. May your grace surround us like a mantle upon our heads, a shawl upon our shoulders, a hand to hold our hand. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we come now to the peace. At the heart of the teaching of Jesus is a message of peace. Let us share his peace one with another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. With you. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Thank you for joining us for this service today. As always, there'll be another online service next week. Details will be on the bulletin and also on our website. For those who are able to join us in person, there'll also be services in Ascot at 8am and Chadlington at 10am. But for now, we end with a blessing. May the seeds of God's message put down deep roots in our hearts. May the seeds of Christ's love not fall on unhearing ears. May the seed of the Spirit grow tall and strong among us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>